Good morning, dear students. This is your teacher Neela Melavat, and we are doing the chapter biomolecules. And this is a lecture number three, dear students. In the last video, dear students, we talked about the macromolecules, the bio macromolecules. And now we know that there are three types of bio macromolecules. First is your proteins, polysaccharides, and the nucleic acids. and now today we'll start with the protein the concept of protein we'll understand better about the proteins see proteins basically they are heteropolymers so can anybody tell me what do you mean by the heteropolymers yes everyone can you tell me what what does the word heteropolymers means okay okay i'll I, i'm i'm doing it heteropolymer means hetero means different polymers means a chain okay proteins they are basically a chain of different amino acids so proteins they are made up of different types of amino acids that is why we call them as heteropolymer hetero means different okay hetero means this particular portion means different polymers means a chain chain of so they are chain of amino acids the chain of different types of amino acids they are polypeptides polypeptide means again a linear chain poly means many okay there is many many amino acids are there and all amino acids they are joined by a bond which is called a peptide bond let's understand this let's let's understand this diagrammatically See this is amino acid number 1 amino acid number 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 and 14 so this particular chain it is made up of 14 amino acids okay and the amino acids they are joined with each other okay they are joined with each other this connection is called as a peptide bond okay this is called a peptide bond so all the amino acids they are joined with each other by the bond which is called as a peptide bond okay everyone so there are 14 amino acids which are present in the chain and all amino acids they are joined with each other by a peptide bond okay that is why we call it as a polypeptide poly means many peptide means bond so there is many bonds so amino acids they are joined by formation of peptide bonds with each other so we have done two characteristics they are heteropolymers of amino acids means different types of amino acids are present here and they are polypeptide means uh, the amino acids they are joined with each other by formation of peptide bond so now let's see whenever there is a formation of peptide bond jab bhi aapka peptide bond banega now before we understand peptide bond we need to understand the 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 formula of amino acid see if you remember i have we have done the formula of amino acid general formula general structure i'm writing it here nh2 molecule and this is your r group So this is the structure of a simple you can say simple amino acid it has this carbon atom on one side of the carbon atom there is a carboxylic group then there is a amino group which is attached with this then there is a hydrogen atom and on the other side the last side that we have a r group which is called as variable group okay the side chain of the variable group okay so amino acids has one carbon has a central carbon which is called as alpha carbon and the same carbon is attached to the carboxyl group as well as to the amino group okay now two amino whenever two amino acids they join with each other dekhiye hamara pehla amino acid hai this is our second amino acid so the peptide bond the bond which is formed between two amino acids it will be between the carboxyl group of the first amino acid and the amino group of the second carboxylic group second amino group okay ye hamara pehla amino acid hai ye hamara second amino acid hai so 
the bond will be formed between the carboxylic atom of the first amino acid and the amino group of the second second amino acid okay so this bonding will be called as a peptide bond so who will tell me the bond formation is between the carboxylic group of the first amino acid and the amino group of the second amino acid okay this will result in the formation of bond which is called as a peptide bond so large uh, many peptides bond will be present in the protein now when we are talking about the proteins why we talk about so much about the proteins although they are the macromolecules but in addition to this they perform lots of important functions in our body and that is why the proteins they are very very important okay everyone they are very very important for us first of all they are necessary for the growth and the repair process that is occurring in the body they help in the transport of nutrients across the membranes okay so whenever there is a cell membrane is present so across the cell membrane the proteins they help in the transportation they can be surface proteins they can be you can say the integral proteins which are present in the membranes and both of them they help in the transportation of the uh, content across the membranes then they act as a intras intercellular ground substrates like collagen okay they help in transporting the uh, substances like collagen they intercellular means they join uh, intercellular means they communicate between the different cells many of the proteins which are present in our body okay many of the proteins they act as enzymes we know most of the enzymes which are uh, which catalyze a specific type of reaction they are proteins in nature like trypsin like amylase they are all proteins in nature there are certain proteins which are also which also act as hormones like your insulin then there is a pigment in our body which is called hemoglobin that is also a protein so many of the proteins they are acting as they are acting as hormones they are acting as enzymes they are acting as uh, the pigments okay now some of them see whenever there is some pathogen which enters our body and it may cause some specific disease in us it might produce some specific element in us so against our body produces certain proteins that can fight with the various infections and those proteins they are referred to as antibodies so the proteins or you can say the antibodies which are pre prepared against or to fight with the various infections they are also proteins in nature now apart from this the receptors the various receptors which are present like the receptors which are responsible for smell taste they are also proteins in nature so in totality i can say proteins are very very important okay they are very important and we need to have you can say they are uh, these amino acids they are essential for the health and they have to be present in our diet because they perform lots of important functions in our body now there are two proteins which are the most abundant and these two proteins generally they have uh, they are you can say uh, based on these two proteins we have many questions which are generally asked in the neat as well as in other exams also so from that point of view these two proteins they are very important the very first is the question is collagen it is one of the most abundant protein in the animal world okay okay if somebody ask you so it is one of the most abundant protein which is present in the animal and world and as i told you it is frequently asked in the competitive exams the second is uh, the question which is the most abundant protein in the biosphere in totality agar hum baat karte hain ki animals aur proteins in dono ko mila kar kaun sa protein hai jo zyada tar hamare biosphere mein available jiski quantity sabse zyada hai so that is your rubisco okay so animal world ki agar hum baat karte hain to it is collagen collagen and second uh, agar hum biosphere ki baat karte hain to rubisco is the most abundant protein 
and uh, if you split it it's a short form that is ribulose biphosphate carboxylase oxygenase so ru means ru means ribulose bis means biphosphate c means carboxylase c means carboxylase and o means oxygenase so ribulose biphosphate carboxylase oxygenase okay ribulose biphosphate carboxylase oxygenase okay everyone so this uh, these two proteins they are most important you always remember their names then coming to the structure level of proteins see as i told you proteins they are very very important okay and they can have they can uh, you can say they can form different types of structure they can have different types of structure and on the basis of the structure they have they can be called with different names like if they have a primary structure we can call them as primary proteins if they have a secondary structure they can be called as secondary proteins if they have a second a tertiary structure we can call them as secondary proteins tertiary protein sorry and they can if they have a quaternary structure we can call them as quaternary proteins so we'll start we'll study the st uh, structure as well as the proteins coming to the first that is called the primary structure of the primary proteins see if a protein has a primary structure what it means see primary structure primary structure means a very simple structure now if we know that uh, you remember it the proteins they are basically made up of amino acids proteins jo hain wo aapke amino acids se bane hue hain तो जो सिंपलेस्ट स्ट्रक्चर है प्रोटीन्स का वो प्राइमरी स्ट्रक्चर है नाउ कमिंग टू द प्राइमरी स्ट्रक्चर प्राइमरी स्ट्रक्चर मींस देयर इज अ चेन ऑफ अमाइनो एसिड्स ओके देयर इज अ चेन ऑफ अमाइनो एसिड्स सो इन इन प्राइमरी स्ट्रक्चर देयर इज अ चेन ऑफ अमाइनो एसिड्स ओके एंड इन दैट चेन ऑन द लेफ्ट एंड ओके वील स्टार्ट फ्रॉम हियर सो दिस काउंटिंग विल बी स्टार्टेड फ्रॉम द लेफ्ट साइड Okay, counting will always start from the left side, and on the left side there is an amino group is present. Okay, so first amino acid is present uh, is counted from the left side. Okay, and the last will be counted on the right side, which is your, where your carboxylic group is present. So the first amino acid will be present on the left end, and this terminal is also called as end terminal amino acid. while the last amino acid will be present on the right side and it will be called as last amino acid or we can call it as c terminal amino acid so jo hamara primary structure hai primary structure basically is made up of chain of amino acids a sequence of amino acids and in a sequence the counting will start from the left side so first amino acid will be present on the left and the last amino acid will be present on the right the left side is also called as n terminal amino acid and the right side is also called as c terminal amino acid so the proteins that have simple primary structure they are called as uh, you can say primary proteins okay so we can say the uh, the primary structure in a primary structure the the pro uh, the amino acids they they exist as a thread like structure they have a thread like structure okay as you can see here they they, they exist like as threads now coming to the secondary structure now as i told you there's the proteins they exist there's a chain of pro, uh, amino acids in proteins there is a chain of amino acids so if uh, this chain it gets folded okay jo ye chain hai aapki amino acids ki ye fold ho jati hai and it forms a helix okay it forms a helix and generally we we, we observe that there are right handed helices are helix are there देखिए दो पॉसिबिलिटीज़ हैं आपकी हेलिक्स बनने की इट कुड बी लेफ्ट और द राइट बट इट हैज़ बीन ऑब्जर्व दैट इन केस ऑफ प्रोटीन्स ओनली राइट हैंडेड हेलिक्स आर प्रेजेंट ओके क्लियर सो द प्राइमरी स्ट्रक्चर इज कम्पोज ऑफ अ चेन ऑफ अमाइनो एसिड्स व्हेन दिस चेन ऑफ अमाइनो एसिड्स इट गेट्स फोल्डेड ओवर इट एंड दे फॉर्म अ हेलिक्स दैन वी कॉल्ड एज अ सेकेंडरी स्ट्रक्चर sometimes they also they also may uh, fold in a manner that they may form sheets so that is also called as beta pleated sheets so that is also come under the 
under the secondary structure. So in this secondary structure I told you proteins they fold in the form of helix. Mostly right handed helix are observed and a few examples of the secondary structure, the secondary proteins are keratin and the silk fiber. Now coming to the tertiary structure. Primary structure ki agar hum baat kare to wahan koi folding nahi hai, chain hai amino acids ki. Secondary structure mein jo hai, thread aapka fold ho kar alpha helix banata hai. Now in case of tertiary structure, there are two kinds of folding. One, the thread is folded over itself. Dekhi, agar mein is chain ko dekhu, to yahan dekhi aapka thread fold ho raha hai. In addition to this, the protein is also getting folded over itself. Ek aapka thread fold ho raha hai, dousra thread jo hai, wo apne upar bhi fold ho raha hai. Protein pura ka pura apne upar fold ho raha hai and it is forming a ball like structure, hollow woolen ball. Jaysse hum oon ko lapetate hai, thread ko lapetate hai aur usse hum ek ball banate hai. So, is tarikhe ka aapka tertiary structure banta hai. So, do tarikhe ki folding aapko tertiary structure mein dekhne ko milegi. First, the thread will fold over itself and second, the protein will fold over itself. And because of this, it will give a three dimensional view to the protein. इसकी वजह से क्या होगा आपका जो प्रोटीन है उसका थ्री डायमेंशनल व्यू हो जाएगा एंड दीज थ्री यू कैन से दीज टर्शरी प्रोटीन्स दे आर एब्सोल्युटली एसेंशियल फॉर योर बायोलॉजिकल एक्टिविटीज ये आपकी बायोलॉजिकल एक्टिविटीज के लिए बहुत ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंट है ये प्रोटीन्स एंड वन सच एग्जांपल इज योर मायोग्लोबिन द प्रोटीन व्हिच इज प्रेजेंट इन योर मसल्स ओके सो दीज प्रोटीन्स दे आर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट and they have a three dimensional view since they show two types of folding one the thread is folding over itself and second the protein itself is folded okay then last we can have the quaternary structure okay in quaternary structure what we'll observe like if we see the uh, this protein it is made up of only single type of chain that it is consisting of a beta polypeptide but in case of quantity structure, your single protein it is made up of different polypeptides. Aapka jo ek protein hai, wo, it is made up of more than one type of polypeptide or we can say one type of subunits. So in this kind of protein which is you can there here, you have two types of subunits are present. Do units present hai aapke, agar aap dekhe, two types of subunits are present here. One is your alpha. So two alpha chains are there, two beta chains are there. So more than one polypeptide. Okay. Okay. Pahela, threads they will fold over itself. Secondly, the protein will also fold over itself. And third, the protein is made up of more than one polypeptide or it is made up of more than one subunit. Then we call it as, if it, it is considered to have a quaternary structure or we call it as a quaternary protein. For example, the hemoglobin, the hemoglobin molecule which is present in our blood, it is made up of four subunits. Wo char subunits hai. Basically, we can say there are two types of subunits. So, two alpha subunits are there, two beta units are there. So, our hemoglobin molecule, it, is a, it, is, it has a quaternary structure. Myoglobin, it has a tertiary structure. Okay. Myoglobin, it has a tertiary structure very good now just have a brief view of the all the components in a primary structure just look at the primary structure we have a straight chain of amino acids in secondary structure there is a folding of the amino acids right it can be in the form of alpha helix or it can be in the form of sheets so hydrogen bonding is present between different uh, you can say different amino acids as well so do tarike ki bonding aapki present hai peptide bond bhi present hai aur hydrogen bonding bhi present hai to jo various folds hai unke beech mein aapki hydrogen bonding hai then you have a tertiary structure where you will observe two kinds of folding thread is folding as well as a protein is folding over itself and uh, but it is made up of only one peptide second uh, uh, the protein is made up of many subunits Again, two types of foldings are there. Let's go a little bit brief. Mein aur dekh lete hai. Let's suppose this. So, in case of a primary structure, we focus. There is a specific number of amino acids. And the protein will have a specific shape. And there is a particular regularity that will form a chain. In secondary structure, amino acids are bending. Ho jati hai, 
वो हेलिक्स फॉर्म कर सकते हैं बीटा प्लीट शीट्स फॉर्म कर सकते हैं सो so, दो तरीके की बॉन्डिंग आपको ऑब्जर्व करने को मिलेगी वन इज अ पेप्टाइड बॉन्ड विच इज़ फॉर्म बिटवीन द वेरियस अमाइनो एसिड्स एंड सेकेंड बिटवीन द वेरियस फोल्ड्स यू विल ऑब्जर्व द हाइड्रोजन बॉन्डिंग इन टर्शरी टर्शरी स्ट्रक्चर बेसिकली रिजेंबल्स लाइक अ बोल वेर द प्रोटीन गेट्स फोल्ड इड ओवर इट सेल्फ देन क्वान्टनरी स्ट्रक्चर यू विल ऑब्जर्व दैट दी इट इज मेड अप ऑफ वेरियस सब यूनिट्स एंड द सब यूनिट्स यू कैन से मोर देन वन पॉलीपेप्टाइड इज प्रेजेंट इन दी इन दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रोटीन and we know the proteins uh, the various properties of the proteins like it could be physical chemical biological proteins that depends on the structure of the protein what kind of structure it has theek hai on its structure will then automatically depends on what functions it perform to ek protein jo hai uska structure depend karta hai uske function par aur uski sari properties uske structure par depend karti hain okay Now coming to the second part, second type of your macromolecules, which is your polysaccharides. Polysaccharides. Okay, dear students, polysaccharides. Let's understand this term. Poly. Poly means many. Okay, poly means many, and saccharide means chain of sugars. Okay, saccharide means it is a chain of sugars. Okay, so polysaccharide means a chain which consists of many types of sugars, a long chain of sugars. Okay, understood? Or we can say the polymer of sugars. So polysaccharide means it is a chain of sugars, the chain of sugars. Okay, the chain may be uh, you can say we can have a same type of sugar which is repeating, or we can have a different type of sugar which is present. which is repeating itself like if we talk about a few examples first starch starch is 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 a polymer of glucose it is a homo polymer of glucose homo means same so glucose molecule is repeated just look at this structure dekhiye is diagram mein structure ko dekhiye ye aapka starch ka structure hai so glucose is repeated it is made up of glucose ye aapke glucose molecule se bana hua hai सो ग्लूकोज मॉलिक्यूल अपने आप को रिपीट करता है मतलब बार बार ग्लूकोज मॉलिक्यूल अटैच होता है सो इट इज़ अ होमो पॉलिमर ऑफ ग्लूकोज सेलोस ऑल्सो एज यू कैन सी इट इज़ अगेन होमो पॉलिमर ऑफ ग्लूकोज ग्लाइकोजन अगेन यू कैन सी इट इज़ अगेन होमो पॉलिमर ऑफ ग्लूकोज देन देर इज अ पॉलीसेक्राई विच इज कॉल्ड इन्यूलिन इन्यूलिन इज ऑल्सो पॉली होमो पॉलिमर ऑफ फ्रैक्टोज ओके बट इट इज़ अ होमो पॉलिमर ऑफ फ्रैक्टोज so starch cellulose glycogen all these three all these three uh, you can say uh, polysaccharides they are the homo polymers of glucose only okay so we can say that starch cellulose glycogen all the three they are made up of glucose molecules okay they are made up of glucose molecules and if if i magnify this structure just look at this structure let's magnify this structure understand this structure first If you look at it, as I told you, starch, cellulose, glycogen. This is all made up of glucose. Okay. Now we know that in case of plants, see, if we talk about plants, then in plants, you will get cellulose. Milega. Cellulose, it is present, or you can say it, a cell wall. Cell wall is present. So cellulose, your main component is cell wall. Ka. इसके अलावा plants के अंदर photosynthesis होती है, and during the process of photosynthesis, starch is made. Okay. So with the help of the chloroplast during photosynthesis, the starch is made, and that is also stored. Then the plants they are eaten by the animals. Okay, the plants they are eaten by the animals, and uh, in the liver, in the liver, the glucose is then converted into the glycogen. Glucose, the excess of glucose है उसको glycogen में convert करके liver cells के अंदर store किया जाता है. So we basically need to understand that all these three things. this starch cellulose and glycogen they are the homo polymers of glucose only while your inulin is made up of fructose now polysaccharides as i told you dear students it is it is a it is a complex structure and it is formed of amino sugars ye aapke amino sugars se bana hua hai for example the amino sugars the example of amino sugars is you can have Uh, glucose glucose amine and n acetyl galactosamine galacto 
galactose amine etc okay so they are complex polysaccharides and which are formed of so we have simple polysaccharides we have complex polysaccharides and uh, for example is your chitin chitin jo hai aapka this is also a polysaccharide and it is made up of n acetyl glucosamine means iski jo repeating unit hai jo apne aap ko bar bar join karti hai wo hai aapki n acetyl glucosamine and if you look at this just look at the structure diagram aap dekhiye you can see a crab isn't it? arthropods basically they consist of insecta आर्थ्रोपोर्ड्स में आपके वेरियस इंसेक्ट्स प्रेजेंट होते हैं सो इंसेक्ट्स के अंदर जो है आपकी स्केल्टन जो है वो एक्जो स्केल्टन होती है मीन्स द स्केल्टन इज प्रेजेंट ऑन द आउटर साइड ऑफ द बॉडी ओके सो एंड दिस बेसिकली द स्केल्टन इज मेड अप ऑफ काइटन व्हिच इज योर एन एसिटाइल ग्लूकोसमीन सो दैट इज वाई द आउटर कवरिंग इज वेरी वेरी हार्ड यू कैन नॉट डैमेज दियर बॉडी वेरी ईजिली ओके एवरी वन नाउ वेन just remember this the you can say whenever two molecules monosaccharide means when same sugar sugar is repeating dekhiye ye hamara glucose hai again this is glucose this is again glucose so glucose so glucose is repeating in a in a unit to form the glycogen so glycogen jab ban raha hai to uske andar glucose jo wo repeat ho raha hai and at certain points if you look at this branching structure pe dekhiye do monosaccharides ke beech mein एक और मॉलिक्यूल ज्वाइन हो रहा है सो एक बॉन्ड बनेगा विच इज कॉल्ड एज ग्लाइकोसिडिक बॉन्ड ओके सो पॉलीसेक्राइड्स में आपको ग्लाइकोसिडिक बॉन्ड देखने को मिलेगा सो दिस बॉन्ड इज फॉर्म्ड व्हेन द इंडिविजुअल मोनोसेक्राइड्स दे आर लिंक्ड बिटवीन टू कार्बन आइटम्स ओके दो कार्बन आइटम्स के बीच में अगर आप इसे इन्हें लिंक करोगे सो डिहाइड्रेशन यानी वाटर मॉलिक्यूल रिमूव हो जाएगा और एक ग्लूकोज मॉलिक्यूल लिंक हो जाएगा so when two monosaccharides they link with each other uh, uh, between two carbon atoms then the hydro water molecule will be removed and one more molecule will be attached and this will result in the formation of bond which is called as glycosidic bond now come in in uh, talking about the polysaccharides if i am talking about the right side is always called as a reducing agent right side jo hai agar hum glycogen ki baat karte hain to jo right end hai wo reducing end hota hai इस पर्टिकुलर पोर्शन को हम कहेंगे रिड्यूसिंग एंड एंड दिस पर्टिकुलर पोर्शन विल बी कॉल्ड एज नॉन रिड्यूसिंग एंड ठीक है नॉन रिड्यूसिंग एंड और द रिड्यूसिंग एंड नाउ कमिंग टू दी अनदर पोर्शन आई होप आपने लैब में यू मस्ट हैव सीन द आयोडीन मॉलिक्यूल आपने आयोडीन देखा है स्टेन हैव यू सीन आयोडीन समवेयर इन योर लैब यस ओके see we know that uh, there are two food components like if you have a starch or if you have a rice like if you have rice and if you add iodine into it immediately immediately when you add iodine into the starch immediately you will find that the color of the starch it turns blue black okay it turns blue black so basically the iodine is used as a confirmatory uh, test to see whether some substance contains starch or not okay now let's understand why does starch gives iodine test ab jo aapka starch hai based beta basically uh, we know that it's a polysaccharide aur isme starch mein jo hai it is made up of glucose ye aapke glucose se bana hua hai so jab wo glucose se bana hua hai to aapka starch jo hai wo helical structure bana deta hai means wo ek secondary structure bana deta hai glucose uh, you can say starch is made up of different units of glucose bahut sare glucose ke molecules join hokar aapka starch banate hain to jab wo chain banate hain okay or we can say starch consist of a chain of glucose so when this there is a chain of glucose this chain of glucose it folds over itself to form a helical structure which is called your secondary structure jab wo second starch ka jab secondary structure ban jata hai तो सेकेंडरी स्ट्रक्चर के अंदर जब आप आयोडीन ऐड करते हैं तो ये आयोडीन मॉलिक्यूल्स जो हैं वो उसके अंदर ट्रैप हो जाते हैं एंड दैट इज व्हाई द स्टार्च गिव्स ब्लू ब्लैक कलर व्हेन इट इज व्हेन आयोडीन इज एडेड इनटू इट ओके नाउ सेकेंड वी नो सेलोस सेलोस इज आल्सो मेड अप ऑफ चेन ऑफ ग्लूकोज सेलोस भी आपका जो है ग्लूकोज से बना हुआ होता होता है इट इज मेड अप ऑफ ग्लूकोज ओनली राइट बट बट 
this glucose or this chain of glucose does not form the secondary structure तो सेल्लोज के अंदर जो आपकी चेन है ग्लूकोज की वो आपका सेकेंडरी स्ट्रक्चर नहीं बनाती है एंड दैट इज़ वाई दी सेलोलोज इज नॉट एबल टू ट्रैप दी आयोडीन और वी कैन से इन अदर वर्ड्स वी कैन से सेलोलोज विल नॉट गिव दी आयोडीन टेस्ट वाइल स्टार्च विल गिव आयोडीन टेस्ट एंड दस इट विल अपी अ ब्लू ब्लैक वंस वी एड आयोडीन इन टू इट नो लेट्स कंपेयर ऑल द थ्री द सेलोज स्टार्च एंड द ग्लाइकोजन See, cellulose. Cellulose is always present in the plant cell, so we can obtain cellulose from the plant, and the it is made up of beta glucose. There are one to four bonds. There are no branches. Means there is a chain of, there is a chain of glucose present in the cellulose. As you can see here, the shape can be seen here. Starch can be uh, you can say two types: amylose and amylopectin. Amylose is again present in the plant. It is made up of alpha glucose. Again, one to four bonds are present. There are no branches. Means again, it is a linear chain which is there. Then coming to the amylopectin, this is also present, obtained from the plants. Again, alpha glucose is present, but here the number of bonds can extend up to six. One to four, one to six be हो सकते हैं, and here branches are there. यहाँ पर branches present हैं. तो अगर हम कहें देखें कि branches हैं, means they have a secondary structure. So यहाँ आपको branching दिख रही है secondary structure में. so shape you will find there is a branching in case of starch glycogen as we know glycogen it is present in the liver cells so it is uh, present in animals again it is made up of alpha glucose number of bonds is 1 is to 4 to 1 is to 6 branching is present okay and it uh, if you compare this diagram we will find in case of glycogen the branching is maximum in comparison to amylopectin okay if we compare these two so amylopectin also has branches glycogen also has branches okay everyone so i hope you understood the polysaccharides and the protein part yes so in this particular uh, lecture we have talked about the two kinds of macromolecules one is proteins another is polysaccharides now we are left with the third which is called as nucleic acids so in next video we'll be starting with the nucleic acids okay so for today you will be making notes of this topic and you will be reading the page numbers 147 then from 149 to 150 uh, these students thoroughly read these pages underline the important points and if there is any query you can call me personally okay so that's all for today bye everyone